You mentioned technology. I want to turn to Clay on this point because Clay, you, you wrote this recently that there are, quote, exciting possibilities on the horizon for education. The reason we haven't progressed down those paths doesn't have to do with the state of the technology. It has to do with how the technology has been implemented. Employing a disruptive approach presents a promising path toward the vision of a transformed classroom. So better implementation of technology in the classroom, what does that look like to you? Well, as a general rule, technology typically is, ne is rarely inherently sustaining or disruptive. It depends upon how you deploy it in the marketplace that determines its disruptiveness. And why disruptiveness is a virtue is new technology, if you try to employ it in the existing applications, the only way people will adopt the new is if it is better than the old, demonstrably better than the old, in terms of its quality and lower in cost. And almost always, what that pits you against is a very difficult head-on attack on a well-established competitor. On the other hand, what it means to be disruptive is you, you transform something that used to be a complicated and expensive so that only a few people had access to it. And now you make it af so affordable and accessible that a whole new population of people now have access to something that used to be in, in, the, in the realm of, of the wealthy. And as a general rule, when you do that, you're actually competing against nothing. You're competing against non-consumption because without you, they had no option. And it turns out that that's a much more um, easier hurdle to overcome if you compete for, to compete against nothing. And then you can get roots and you can understand what those people need next and then need next and need next, you know. And ultimately it then becomes good enough that the people in the prior world see in this new something that is not just good enough but actually it has other characteristics. You know, so imagine that Saul and I are in a classroom and the teacher's, you know, doing as, as well as she can and I just want to talk to Sal because I think he could explain something that I can't get from what, the, you know, but I can't ask Sal because it would be not polite in a classroom, you know, and uh, I can't put the teacher on on pause. But isn't it wonderful that we can put, pa put pause and I could ask three or four people, what's, what's, what are we talking about? And then I can look online and say, geez, there's somebody in Beijing who's working on the same problem right now, you know? And almost always when the disruption becomes good enough, it, because it brings things that were impossible to do there, People get sucked out from the, the old into the new, excited to adopt the new. And that's why disruption is so important. 